Apple has tried to brainwash you that iPad is not a computer, but if you're here, then you probably realize the potential that if paired with the right keyboard, it could be. I'm comparing the Apple Magic Keyboard, the Bridge Max Plus, the ESR Ascend, and the ESR Rebound. This is part of a series of comparison reviews I do on the channel, so if you haven't already subscribed and checked out that comparison playlist, please do so. And disclaimer before starting, the ESR Gear keyboards I'm comparing are the 11-inch iPad Pro rather than the 12.9, but other than that obvious keyboard size, the functionality is the same. So the obvious overarching difference between these keyboards, wired versus wireless. You've got the Apple Magic Keyboard in all of its glory with the smart connectors on the back, which is basically just being plugged into your iPad, and with that comes an obvious advantage to how stable and responsive this thing's going to be. And in my testing, that's all very true. Then you have the others, which all offer varying forms of physical attachment to the keyboard stand, but they all use Bluetooth to connect. This can be prone to some, not a lot, of disruption from other devices and some lag especially when connecting at first. So right there is the first choice you have to make. Wired connection equals Apple Magic Keyboard, or wireless connection, any of the others. But the second part of this that you have to decide is the overall design of these keyboards. I'm gonna take you through each keyboard separately here, but later on I'll show you a lot more side-by-side -side features to compare and distinguish between all of them. So first up, the Apple Magic Keyboard comes with a rubberized finish that feels comfortable, opening up to a 130 degree angle, and everything just feels really compact with very little travel room between the keys or the trackpad all blending into a very small base, by the way, as well. You've got the levitating iPad, which is probably a bigger headline feature for a lot of people. The iPad and the stand are magnetic, so they just stick together, and then it all folds into this compact case. Overall, a really great case. I wouldn't expect anything less, given that it's actually an Apple product. They also managed to put the USB-C plug directly into the hinge, which can simultaneously charge your keyboard and your iPad all at once, which is a much cooler feature than I thought, and one that I really rely on heavily. So if you are choosing that Apple Magic Keyboard, one companion that I've been using and found really helpful is this Moft stand. So this is a case that snaps onto your iPad. It does have the pass-through for the connector, so you can still connect wired to that Apple Magic Keyboard. But then you stick this magnet on the back, and that magnet is actually gonna allow you to connect to a Moft stand. Basically, I use this to switch between the two. So if I need the keyboard, I just pick it up and connect it to my Apple Magic Keyboard. But if I'm not, then I take it off, connect it to the stand for a keyboard-free design. This is something I've been using a lot more often just given that I'm using universal control. And again, I like the simplicity of just picking it up, putting it on something else when I don't need that keyboard. Link in the description below to that. Then you've got the Bridge Pro Max keyboard. It also has a relatively compact design, but taking more inspiration from a MacBook design down to that aluminum body, the 135 degree viewing angle, the backlit keyboard, the function keys on top, and then the iPad also uses magnets to stick into the case and remain firmly in place. So because the iPad sits so far back instead of hinging forward like the Apple keyboard, it frees up a lot more surface area to place the keyboard, adding that additional function row at the top. And then also you can see this massive trackpad that's actually larger than the one that's on the MacBook. Now, as you extend the iPad open, the hinge props the keyboard slightly up into a slanted profile for ease of typing. It's not a huge slant, but it is actually a nice feature to have that rise toward you. And then on the back, you've got the bridge logo and a similar material to the iPad keyboard, which by the way, very prone to fingerprints and smears. I had to do a lot of cleaning before the B-roll of this video. The USB-C charging port is located on the right side of this one, which only charges the keyboard by the way, and not the iPad. So the ESR Rebound case, this one actually really surprised me. Taking many design elements from that Apple Magic Keyboard down to that magnetic functionality and that floating design of the iPad, there's a lot of companies out there obviously who try to mimic Apple's design choices and at a much more affordable price, and ESR has actually delivered on that. They're offering very similar materials to the Apple Keyboard, but perhaps less prone to fingerprints, at least on the inside. And this one offers a full QWERTY keyboard, but offers those function keys as well. This one comes with the backlit keyboard, which can not only adjust the brightness, but can also change the color, which I thought was a really cool feature. The trackpad is small on this one, but I'm surprised at how well it actually works, even when doing gestures. On the top, you've got the indicator lights for charging, caps lock, and then Bluetooth. And this thing does still use Bluetooth, by the way, and not the smart connector. And then a USB-C that fits into the side, right beside that on-off switch. This one's for the 11-inch iPad Pro, but it's incredible how much they packed into such a slim folio, and it also comes with a magnetic clamp to keep it secure. 
the ESR Ascend case is on its own lane, not taking inspiration from any of the others in this video. It's clear what they tried to accomplish with this one is the most secure keyboard case, coming with a detachable case with embedded magnets that connect to the bottom and the back of the keyboard folio to snap it into place. The back of this folio actually folds to become the stand, which offers greater flexibility in the viewing angles than most others. The hinging at the back of the folio means that there's also more room for a full keyboard with a row for numbers and another for function keys, and probably the largest selling point, a much larger trackpad than the ESR Rebound case. So in my opinion, this one maybe doesn't look as sleek as the ESR Rebound or that Apple Magic keyboard as well, but what it lacks in design, it's actually making up for in functionality and security. This one also comes equipped with a backlit keyboard and can cycle through colors and offers dedicated home, lock, power, and media controls. By the way, this one also uses Bluetooth to connect and offers a charging port on the side. Now that's a look at each of the keyboard's designs individually, but what about the side-by-side -side comparisons? So starting with the similarities, they all have full QWERTY keyboards and all are shown here to scale, by the way. While most have function keys, the two floating designs have less space to fit everything. The ESR Rebound pulls the function keys into the number keys using the function buttons plus any of the keys above, while the Apple Magic keyboard actually chooses to get rid of those function rows altogether. They all have equipped trackpads which do offer full gesture support, with the largest trackpad going to that Bridge Max Plus and the smallest going to the ESR Rebound case. They all use USB-C for charging, although Apple is the only one that can actually charge the iPad at the same time through that smart connector. Meaning with all the others, you do have to charge both separately. And this is a point that I didn't think I was going to care about, but it's definitely really convenient to have that Apple simultaneous charging. In terms of weight, we've got the heaviest bridge keyboard at 2.1 pounds or 970 grams. The rest all come in a very comparable 1.6 and 1.7 pounds. While battery life varies very heavily based on whether you're using the backlight or not, the leader in battery life is a tie between Bridge and ESR. And while you can see all the stats here, it's also important to note that Apple is one month, though because it charges your iPad too, I've never actually noticed this thing die. Now each keyboard has unique features that it really does well over the others. Apple has that wired connection to connect and offers a floating design. Those magnets also snap into place into the back before placing it flat and collapsing. The bridge keyboard has a backlit keyboard with adjustable brightness. It also has that full function row and really resembles a MacBook if you're going for that look. The ESR Rebound has a magnetic fit, much like Apple, and the ESR Ascend has a removable case offering much more protection over all the other options. Seeing a comparison side by side, here's all the pros of each device. Feel free to screenshot this by the way if you wanna save it for reference, but then flipping the script to the cons. So Apple doesn't have a backlit keyboard and has a relatively small trackpad to work with. Of course, also coming at an extremely expensive price, especially for the 12.9 inch model, that is a consideration. The bridge option is still a relatively expensive option, which is surprising as the keys and the trackpad actually felt much lower quality to me than all the rest. The ESR Rebound is the closest thing to Apple's in terms of quality, which again is really surprising. But the one thing I actually don't like is the flip magnet that secures it in place. Like Apple, I'd rather it just close and not clamp shut. I mean, that's subjective, but I prefer the cleaner look without it. The ESR Ascend case is a great option if you want the Apple quality, but you want a more rugged protection. And I do think most people would opt for that case option. So hopefully that side-by-side -side comparison has helped you decide as they clearly all have these pros and cons. But to easily sum it up, the way that I would summarize this, do you want that wired stable connection? If so, go with Apple. Or do you want that higher quality keyboard with cost not being an issue? Also go with Apple. Do you want it to resemble a MacBook? Go with Bridge. Do you want it to be the most sensible slash cheapest option? For that one, go with any of the ESR options. And by the way, cheapest is referring to the cost and not the quality of these cases. They really are good options. From there, it's just a choice of whether you want that floating design or if you want that most protection and larger keyboard and trackpad. Finally, do you want the largest trackpad available? If so, go with Bridge. Myself, after testing, I'm now using the Apple Magic Keyboard for my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That is primarily for that charging efficiency, the fact that I plug it in and it charges both. Really underrated feature, and I really do feel like I need it for an iPad that I have to charge quite often. And then for the 11 inch iPad Pro, I'm using the ESR Ascend for the surprising quality that I really didn't expect to love as much as I do. But your turn, let me know which of these keyboards is your favorite in the comments right now. Also, by the way, if there's anything that I missed or you feel that I didn't cover, drop it down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get to it. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.